Hello and g'day! In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make these Polaroid cards to put your own photos on so they look like old Polaroids. Remember the ones we used to have back in the day? I think they were around about the 80s. I had one in 1980 because I used to take pictures of my kids. I reckon these little photos look amazing in your journals. You can put any type of image on these cards. It doesn't have to be a person or a relative. Like this one here is just a street photograph. This particular one is printed on a glossy photo print. And this one here is printed on matte. You can sort of see the difference. It's nice and shiny. And that one's matte, got no shine at all. So depending on what type of look you want you can go for a gloss or a matte they look good in either one you can use just a you know a printable of something that you might have bought some ephemera off someone or you could have cut it out of a book you can use that and i'll show you how we're going to use this one i've got this printable in a couple of styles we've got this one here the first one which is got a few paint splatters on it. And I've printed this on white just to show you the basics. I'm gonna show you a few different styles. And you can do some stamping on that or just color it up with some distress ink. Then we've got this one. It's got a very faint gray diamond print on it. And this is more in keeping with the original style of Polaroid. They've got a very faint pattern printed on them as well. So they are normally white, the Polaroids, but you know, we want to get a bit adventurous. So I made these ones in black. They're ideal if you want to put these in a men's journal. If your photo is too big, cut them up, put one on each one, and they would still look fantastic in your journal. Just have a bit of fun with it. And, you know, like, it's still a Polaroid. It still looks like a Polaroid, even though it's black. If you printed this on a gloss, even look more like a Polaroid because the Polaroids were glossy. More for our journaling, we tend to sort of stay away from the shiny stuff. So that's why I printed most of this on matte. So we've got three styles of the pattern, the diamond print, the plain, and the paint splatter. And this is the template that goes with the printable. You just cut this square out here. You just place it over your picture and trace inside there, and then cut out your picture and glue that onto your Polaroid. This one here, is the actual size of the photograph. You just cut that out, trace around the edge of it, and then cut that out, and you're good to go. And that's a guide if you've got a really large piece of paper and you just wanna move it around and see only what the picture would look like. Now these ones here, they've got a background print on them. They're not plain at all. So you can see here all the coffee stains. You might want to get one of these and glue it down like this. If you glued it into your book, you're not going to see the back. But if you don't glue it into your book and you, you just want to stick it in a pocket, well, you want the back of your Polaroid to look nice as well. So what we do then is this. I've got some prints here that are faux coffee prints. These have been made by Tuesday Moriarty. I show these a lot in my videos because I use them a lot. So I've just used 200 GSM cardstock and I've just got Tuesday's coffee dyed papers and I just go through them and they are fantastic because I just put a print on one side, a print on the other side, and I'm off and running. This is more for if you're going to put them in pockets. 
If you're not putting in them in pockets and you're gluing them down, don't waste your ink. Just do one side. That'll be fine. Now I'll show you what they look like with the Polaroids printed. So this one is, is coffee dyed and it's got the paint splatter and the plane. And see how random they are. You never really know where they're going to turn out. And that's just got some of the doilies on the back. So then you've got another one with, it's a bit darker and it's got the doily on the front and see how the doily turns out in each Polaroid. And I've just put that print on the back. This, this set has got 20 different prints so there's no way that you're going to run out of you know a variety here's one that's very typical of the the way the staining works for the coffee and that's the back here's another doily it's a much lighter one and this time i've gone and used the color one she's done some in the writ so that must be the blue and the yellows and it's gone a bit purpley these are perfect for say you're doing a bit of color you know some people i've seen people comment i oh, you know i'm over the vintage i want to see some color does anyone do any color well they do of course they do and there's always an option to do color so i just put the plain pinkish color one on the other side so you don't have to do these browns and tea dyes. You can use colour. I've made a printable of just some coffee quotes and just a couple of other random quotes that you can put on the bottom here. This is a rub-on. So if you've got rub-ons and you don't have a printer, rub-ons are really good for that. But see how, you know, the coffee quotes look really good with the coffee behind it. And look at this one. It's all random. You never know where they're going to land. But this one is, this is how we brew it. And it landed right on that coffee stain. I was really pleased about that. What we need to do is we need to cut the black line away. So I'm going to put this ruler on the inside of this line here. So I'm actually going to cut that black line away. Holding my ruler firmly and then I'm just going to pull that away. So you can see now that that edge is quite clean. No black line there. By the way, when you print these out, notice how there's a border around this. If you, you need to print this at actual size, so they are the proper size of a Polaroid. If you print this out full size, if, you, if your printer goes all the way to the edge, your Polaroid size will be larger. Just remember that. So this time we need to cut this black line off. So I'm gonna turn it all the way around put my ruler to the inside so I'm cutting that black line away okay so that's all you really got to remember that every cut you make is got to cut that black line away so I'm going to do the same here at the top turn it all the way around so I'm always cutting from because I'm right-handed I'm always cutting with my ruler on the left of the line so that I make sure I'm cutting that away. And see by doing it that way, you, all of those black lines around the very outer edge are gone. So now I'm going to color the edges. I'm only using two colors. I'm using black soot and vintage photo. I like using two colors because it gives a little bit of highlighting if you like it gives a bit of interest and the cardboard has because it's colored front and back I've still got the white paper so I like to just very 
the, oh, how can I say this? I'm only coloring the edge. I'm, you can, if you want, bring more color into the center of the Polaroid, but I'll show you two ways of doing it. One, you can do it a clean way and just put it on the very edge to get rid of that white mark and only that white mark. And I'll do that first just so that I've got control, have a look and see how I want to do it. Okay, Just very lightly color the corners because I want them to be a little bit darker just so that it looks a little bit older and a, a bit more variation in color. It looks like it's real tea dyed or coffee dyed paper. It, it's starting to already look real. It doesn't look like it's faux coffee dyed paper. I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of black to that just to give it something else. But I'm not going to put it everywhere. I'm just going to give it a hit and a miss just on the very edge, maybe on the corner, because I've got a little bit of black in that splash. So it'll work. So that's just give it a little bit of a highlight. You don't have to put the second color in. Sometimes I just get a bit fiddly. All right, and then we need to put a photograph on there. Okay, so you've selected your photographs. This, the photographs are a lot easier to work with once you've got them. You need your photographs to be around about three inch squares. They're actually, to fit on there, they're actually 3.1 inches. So you can get whatever photographs you want, either print them off your digital photographs or just get some photographs off the internet. As long as they're not copyright, you can go ahead and print something out. So these are people I don't know. And this is just some cotton reels in a lovely old wooden stand. These very fancy looking gentlemen, I've got no idea who they are either, but I think they'll look pretty good on this color paper. So I'm going to put them on there. I think I might go vintage photo because it's got that sepia look about it. I'm only doing the edge and I'll, I'll one of the photos I'm going to show you how I achieve a vignette look which all it is is coloring from the corners and blending it into the center a little bit and sort of framing your photograph I'll show you how I do that with these distressings as well so that fits over that black square. So that black square is there just as a guide for you to put your photograph on. So I'm just using the, the Helmer fabric glue. You could also use the Barely Art glue. I'm just using this because I don't want any bubbles or anything. And now you guys are coming into winter you can get Barely Art glue delivered to you even if it's freezing. So just remember that Barely Art glue can be shipped all year round. So I'm just going to square that up on that line at the left and it will just fall into place then. And that's it. That's that one. But don't they look great? All right, let's do this one now. Use this template here as a guide. You've got to cut out this Xbox area, place the template over your photo and draw a pencil line around the frame, then cut out your photo. So I'm going to use the black soot for this one. What will we do? We'll do this one first. And that's really darkened that edge up. I'm keeping, I'm not bringing it over 
to the front because I don't want too much on this photograph just yet. I want the edge to be really, really dark. So I'm keeping it like almost flat and just going like that. All right, normally you would go on an angle like that and you would put some color there. I'm avoiding doing that. Same here. I don't often use black, but for these Polaroids it's worked out quite well. And I'll show you what I mean by just doing it. When you do it like that, you're just getting the sides done, that very edge. And this is the traditional way that we do it. We do it like that so that it actually comes further in and gets more onto the card like when you're doing it like that. I hope you can see how I've done that. And then you would go even further and do it like that and blend it up. I've got that leaning over like that, not like that. And see how I'm blending it in and I'm leaving the center, the grayish color, and I'm just sort of getting it to be like a the old, the vignette. I think it's vignette or vin, I was calling it vinegar earlier, <laughs> saying vinegar, that don't sound right. Vignette. Okay, see that? So it's dark on the outside and then it just goes lighter to the middle. So I've done it on that just to show you that that's how I'm going to do it on here. I'm going to do it on this picture here. So I'm going to take a little bit more care with this one and I'm going to press further on this side and very little on this side just so that it comes darker on the edge into lighter. I'm not making this too dark at all. I want to build it up. I'm going to spin it around. I'm going to add some more as I see I need it. I'm using my fingers just to spin this around. Then I'm going to come back in and darken the corners a lot more and darken the edges a lot more. Once you go around it lightly once, when you come back around the second or third time, it takes the color better and it's a lot easier. So there you go. We've got that nice vignette. 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 Oh gosh, I have to look that word up. Now I'm going to do that a little bit to the bottom of this without adding any more ink to it. I just want to get a little bit going on around the edges just because I've got that this piece here so dark I don't need to make this background too dark. Alright, there's three ways you can do the one picture. We've got a very light one with just a dark edge. That might suit you. Then we've got one with a very small amount of the distress ink coming in to the center of the Polaroid. And that's the medium one. I'll call that the Goldilocks card. And this one's quite dark. So whatever you like, you can go light, medium, dark. But I think we'll use the Goldilocks one. And of course, if you've got no distress ink at all and you've only got archive inks or something like that, you can use that on the edge and you can stamp on this as well. Okay, so let's glue this little lady down. Right, now if I wasn't talking to you, that wouldn't have took me very long at all. I'd have got through that a lot quicker. I'm just going to finish these up and I'll come back and show you what they look like all finished up.
Please stay around for the slideshow. I'm Donna. Thanks for watching and bye for now. Troubles disappear Oh, tomorrow's near It's gonna be okay No matter come what may I'm gonna set things straight Tomorrow Let all our worries fade Let them sweep away There'll be another day Tomorrow Oh, oh, oh Sweep away, there'll be another day